I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition E, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 5th. Proposition E is an ordinance that would amend the planning code to allow 100% affordable housing projects and educator housing projects in public zoning districts and to expedite city approval of these projects. The planning code currently does not include specific zoning rules for residential projects dedicated to employees of the San Francisco Unified School District or the San Francisco Community College District. Under Proposition E, 100% affordable housing and educator housing projects would be allowed in residential zoning districts and in public zoning districts, except on property used for parks, would be located on lots that are at least 10,000 square feet, could not demolish or replace existing residential units, would be subject to less restrictive rules regarding size, ground floor height, density, and other factors than other residential buildings, would allow a limited amount of mixed or commercial use that supports affordable housing, and would not be subject to any conditional use restriction unless the restriction has been adopted by the voters. Proposition E would require a review of proposed 100% affordable housing and educator housing projects within 90 to 180 days, depending on the size of the project. And the proposition would also authorize the expedited review of the first 500 units of proposed educator housing. The planning department could administratively approve 100% affordable and educator housing projects without review by the planning commission. The Board of Supervisors could amend Proposition E by a two-thirds vote without voter approval. If you vote yes, you want to amend the planning code to allow 100% affordable housing projects and educator housing projects in public zoning districts and to expedite approval of these projects. If you vote no, you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with Peter Cohen from the Council of Community Housing Organizations and a proponent of Proposition E. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Nick Smith from the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Thank you for having me. Thank you both for being here. We're going to start with opening statements and we'll begin with Peter. Sure. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, you know, San Francisco has had this, what seemed like a, a never-ending affordable housing crisis, and we hear that in the newspapers all the time. Um, and what are the solutions? Uh, the, the, in a very simple way, the two primary ingredients for affordable housing are money and land. And we have this November two measures, uh, I'll speak about Prop E specifically, that are really complements for both of those. Prop A is a large bond, as we know, Proposition E is the complement, and it's about land. The need we have is to get more sites that will actually accommodate affordable housing throughout the city. Most of our affordable housing historically has been on the eastern side of the city. We've had larger sites, old industrial areas. It's where a lot of working class communities have been, so bringing affordable housing to those communities has been a priority goal. But it's clearly time that we have opportunities throughout the city, the western side of the city, the northern, the southern, to build those, those, uh, those housing um, uh, developments, but we don't have the sites. What this measure does very basically is four things. First, it says any 10,000 square foot site, that's sort of the minimum size that we need to make a project um, kind of work, will be automatically zoned to allow affordable housing. There's no rezoning required, no environmental impact report, no conditional use. Essentially, it's by right zoning for affordable housing. Secondly, publicly owned sites will also be zoned to allow affordable housing. Currently, they don't allow any housing at all. Third is that on school district and city college district properties, their sites will also be zoned to allow, by right, educator housing, which I can talk about a little bit more. And then lastly, the measure requires that the city planning department review and approve both these kinds of projects within a very specified time frame. This is really a big, big change to the way we do affordable housing. Thank you, Peter. Nick. Well, we do have a problem in San Francisco with a very high cost of living. That's for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them, a big one, of course, is the cost of housing. Um, and I think what we all want is for housing in San Francisco to be more affordable. We recognize that there's not enough supply. 
Um, unfortunately, affordable housing programs uh, are really not effective in getting us the supply that we need. So um, what we really need to do, um, so here's why. If I'm a developer in San Francisco and I want to build, I'll go to the mayor's office of housing and community development. They'll tell me, okay, you can build your project, but you have to make 25% of it uh, below market rate housing. Um, or you pay a huge fee. And also, it's going to take a year or two, maybe, to get the approvals you need, to get the surveys done, to actually start your project. Well, if I'm a developer, I'm looking at that. I'm not going to build here. I don't want to build here. I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, so what we need to do, instead of creating these carve-out programs to try to fix the problem, we need to just let people build. We need to um, make it very easy and give people the tools they need to actually build in the city. We'll get more market rate housing, and eventually the uh, market rate will drop, and there will be more, ho more affordable housing for everyone. Thank you, Nick. And I think you may have just answered my first question, but if you would like to elaborate on it. Um, you probably do not believe this measure is the correct way to address San Francisco's affordable housing shortage. So what is the correct way? Right. Well, I did just kind of answer that. But <laughs> I will say um, it's not just anecdotal. Uh, there was a 2015 report by the California Legislative Analyst Office, which showed um, that, uh, that building more market rate housing resulted in less displacement regardless of inclusionary housing policies. And it also said that um, these affordable housing programs at any kind of scale are ex prohibitively expensive and just uh, impractical to do. And what they advised instead is that policymakers encourage, um, they encourage private housing development. So as I said, we're going to get more market rate housing, which over time will drive the supply up, will drive the price down. That's just Economics 101. So that's what we need to do is just make it easier. And if we can, roll back the uh, regulations and make it easier. Let's do that for everyone. Thank you, Nick. Peter, same question. Why do you believe this measure is the correct way to address San Francisco's affordable housing shortage? Sure. Well, let me start by pivoting off of uh, Nick's answer. Um, so the legislative analyst report from 2015 did not say that affordable housing is not effective. What it said is that on its own, it's not effective to take care of the breadth of our affordable housing needs. So I'm not going to quibble. I think there's some fundamental problems with the analytics in that LAO report. But I'm also not here to debate market rate housing. This is specifically about affordable housing, which I think most people recognize you need both. There might be a supply argument around market rate housing that brings prices down to some equilibrium if that even exists, but certainly not at the lower income and very low income levels that we need to serve folks where it really requires public subsidy. So this measure is about affordable housing by its kind of literal definition that requires public support, public subsidy, nonprofit developers, and in that case, we cannot compete in the open market for sites, even if they were available, which they're not, which we need the rezoning. The transactional costs are something that we can't compete with. So this, frankly, provides um, a little bit of a competitive advantage by rezoning sites only for affordable housing throughout the city. That's how we solve our problem. Thank you. And then second question, and we'll start with you, Peter, is how does this benefit educators in San Francisco? So there's been a, a long discussion, at least over the last four or five years, about um, the 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 crisis, if you will, within the educator community. There's a retention problem that the school district has. There's an attraction problem, and they're even having educators who are getting evicted from their homes. Uh, one of the solutions, not the only, is to literally build new housing specifically for educators. It's been very difficult to do because of some very esoteric legal and financing reasons, which have been unlocked in the last couple of years by some state law. So what that does is it allows us to help the school district and city college use their properties to build brand new housing for those educa that educated workforce. This is a totally fresh um, kind of landscape. There's one, uh, if you will, model project or pilot project in the sunset now at the Francis Scott Key Elementary Annex, which will sort of test you know, certain um, ideas. But we want to see that expanded throughout the district. Thank you. Nick, can you speak to this issue of educator housing? Yeah, sure. Well, I think um, the amount of new housing you're going to get through these kind of programs, because it is expensive to do, it's going to be so small that it's going to have such an insignificant effect. And on top of that, to even apply for this housing, you have to go through a lottery process. 
uh, which is open, by the way, to any employee of the Unified School District or Community College District, which includes a lot more than teachers. And speaking of teachers, this does not include teachers who are not part of the government school system. So if we really care about educators, why are we not including them in this? Um, basically, yeah, I don't think this is going to help teachers all that much. And I think uh, the impacts of it, it's going to perpetuate the same kind of programs that disincentivize new building. So we're going to see less housing as a result of this than otherwise could happen. And I think in the long run, it's not going to be that great for teachers and certainly not going to be that great for anybody else. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We're going to move into closing statements and begin with you, Peter. Sure. I'm, I'm going to circle right back to how I started, which is I think that this November of 2019, we have before us with these two measures, Proposition A, a $600 million bond, Proposition E, which is citywide rezoning for affordable housing, arguably the most significant affordable housing set of policies we've seen in at least a decade. This is, this is a really big opportunity for us to, if you will, put our actions where our words are, rather than t talking about an affordable housing crisis and all the needs that are not being met, we can get to work. And uh, it's really exciting to me, having spent most of my uh, professional career in this, in this world of affordable housing, working in east side neighborhoods, to think that we have the opportunity to be doing our work in every neighborhood of San Francisco. That is going to be a whole new San Francisco. And I hope voters see that and welcome affordable housing into their communities. Thank you. Nick. Well, yeah, I think every election voters are presented with uh, one crisis after another, whether that's homelessness or public health or housing. Um, it's always a crisis, and the solution is always more government. And these programs are just slapping a Band-Aid onto the existing pile of Band-Aids that are already there. So I think um, what we need to do is to follow the advice from the uh, Legislative Analyst Office and start peeling back the Band-Aids and letting it heal naturally. And for this, that means uh, allowing developers to build in the city, allowing people to build, making that as easy as possible, which we're apparently prepared to do for affordable housing. And yeah, once we do that, we'll see more housing, the market rate drops over time as the supply goes up, and we get more affordable housing for everyone, not just teachers who win the lottery. Thank you. And thank you both for your time and for your input on this measure. Yeah, thank thank you. you for having me. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information about this and other ballot measures in the November election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on October 7th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 5th.